Hello Ethical Hackers! Today I share with you an account takeover I achieved during a recent penetration testing of a web application. For those who don't know what an account takeover is, there is a dedicated section for that. From there I will explain how I enumerated all the endpoints. Then I will walk you through the steps I took to gain access to an account with the highest privilege and without any user interaction. It's going to be a fun and rewarding episode, so stay with me until the end. First of all, what is account takeover? Account takeover happens when an attacker with low privileges or none at all can take control of another account which he or she doesn't own. For example, you can find customer account takeover in e-commerce platforms or any other service which manages user accounts. I see account takeover qualified as a vulnerability, however, I, I don't think this should be the case. In fact, I tend to describe it as a result of one or more vulnerabilities, just like a data breach that can be a result of a SQL injection vulnerability or a remote code execution due to a command injection vulnerability. Based on the distinction we have just set between vulnerability and its outcome, there are many vulnerabilities which can lead to account takeover. For example, you might have an open redirect vulnerability which leaks the user token upon logging. In this scenario, an attacker can take over the victim's account by simply clicking on a malicious link. The scenario I will describe in the remaining of this episode involves unauthenticated endpoints which, once combined, result in a full account takeover without user interaction. Account Takeover in JavaScript Enumeration The developers wanted to know what a public user could achieve with no prior access. I didn't have login credentials as it was a black box penetration testing assignment. In such use cases, I usually dive right into JavaScript files, hoping to find API endpoints, hard-coded secrets, or even juicy comments. I like to use Chrome's dev tool because it provides me with a list of JavaScript files, beautifies them and looks for specific keywords across the entire code base. Besides, I can make breakpoints and track events to analyze how the application works from a client-side perspective. Since this application had a separate front end, I collected all the API endpoints. It is a tedious task, of course but it's a rewarding in the long run. I found many endpoints, but the most interesting ones were the user sign-up feature, password reset based on the user identifier, and account listing based on the user email. You will see why shortly. Now, before I found how to achieve account takeover, I first tested the endpoints I collected earlier. During application mapping, there was a registration form which returned an error. I thought maybe it's broken and I moved on. However, I now understand what's happening. It turns out that the application sends a confirmation email to the user. However, the mail server was down. Besides, the sign up requires an approval from an employee. How did I know that? Well, I found a debugging portal on another port on the same server which disclosed all the operations, including the back-end responses. One of them contained a mail server connection error, and another one returned the ID of the newly created user, which means that it has been successfully created, but not active yet. Bypassing the approval process If you recall, I mentioned earlier that I found a password reset API endpoint that uses the account ID. Guess what? I have the new user ID, so I quickly send the request. To my surprise, the response is positive and I can now log in as the new user without approval from an internal employee. As a bonus, I have a limited admin role, which is not as powerful as the system administrator, but it's a good start to hunt for the ultimate account takeover. Sadly, the user identifiers were long and random. 
also known as UUIDs. Therefore, I needed a way to enumerate them. Information Disclosure to the Rescue When I logged in with the new user, I captured the traffic while doing the usual application mapping, and one endpoint caught my attention. It queries the backend for an email and retrieves data which includes the user ID, among other personally identifiable information. This endpoint matched the one I found during JavaScript enumeration. So now I need prior knowledge of the victim email to achieve account takeover. Or do I? In fact, inspecting the debugging portal reveals exhaustive details about this specific feature, including the SQL query, which happened to be using the like operator in the WHERE statement. The SQL query resembled something along the lines of select email from user where email like and then question mark. Although there is no SQL injection, I can still use the person character which returned the entire users from the database. A massive information disclosure. System admin account takeover without interaction. We now have all the ingredients to get that system admin account. Matter of fact, I didn't know there is one until I dumped the entire database with that information disclosure vulnerability. I now have the system admin ID, which I used to reset the password therefore achieving full account takeover of the system admin user. In terms of the impact, I essentially got full access to the application as the highest role possible without any interaction from the victim and without any prior access to the application. Hopefully, you learned a trick or two on how to achieve account takeover during a web application penetration testing using a black box approach. Account takeover is one of the biggest security flaws. Depending on the level of access, attackers can compromise the entire web application or even the whole infrastructure. If you're a developer, I hope you learned why you must always implement authentication and proper access control on privileged endpoints. Besides, I recommend you request a penetration testing early in the development lifecycle to avoid any design flaws or business logic errors that will become expensive to patch later. If you found this content helpful, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to this channel so that you get updates whenever I publish a new video on ethical hacking and bug bounty hunting. If you're new to hacking and want to learn the basics, check out the free OWASP Top 10 Theory and Hands-on training on thehackerish.com and apply your knowledge on the lab which supports it. If you enjoy learning with videos, I invite you to watch the OWASP Top 10 YouTube playlist. However, I encourage you to first try to solve the lab exercises so that you don't spoil them. Don't forget that there are supporting blog posts for most of the videos you watch on this YouTube channel. I also encourage you to subscribe to the Friday newsletter on thehackerish.com to gain some new hacking knowledge at the end of the week. If you enjoy listening while doing other things at the same time, check out the Hack for Fun and Profit podcast, link in the description box. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning, and go find some bugs.